and going live. I'm gonna assume you're live. It's circling. You're live. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're gonna to be having some fun talking about how to dimension lumber. So you've got some rough saw, rough saw lumber, how do you actually turn it into a usable board? Um, so we're gonna be going through how do you actually dimension all the sides and get something that's fully functional out of it. Um, but before we do that, we actually have a few things to talk about. Um, number one, uh, one of the members in our group, uh, particularly on the high mind, Matthew Ezel, uh, his family actually was just down in the hurricane and uh, their house is basically destroyed. How roof was ripped off. Pretty much everything they have is destroyed. Um, and so we're actually doing a bit of a, a fundraiser drive for them. And so there is a link to a GoFundMe down below. Um, and I'd love to actually see the support from the community and uh, on the hive mind, we've been doing quite a bit for him so far. So I'd like to see that continue. So they're going to ooh, go ahead and take a look at that link down below. And uh, thank you, Matt, Matt, for being a uh, member of the channel and uh, having a bit of fun in here. Um, yeah, he's actually, it's the, the second hurricane he's been through in three years uh, where basically he's been wiped out. So I'd love to uh, wrap our arms around him and say, uh, thank you for being part of the community. Um, what else we got? Oh, um, for those of you who normally come on lives, uh, we are getting shirts in for the, uh, um, the Knights of the White Oak. Um, so they are, they're actually doing those through Teespring, so you can go and order. There's a link to that down below. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit more once we actually get ours in. I just got the, uh, I just got it up and running today. Um, so Sarah and I will soon have them. I want to say a huge thank you to Avi for, um, putting those, uh, together. She did all the artwork for it and did a, mm. Fantastic job. So yeah, gotta take, gotta take a look at those. Uh, what else we have? Oh, and then we've got uh, the, whoop, turn back around here, say hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Uh, we've got the, uh, um, the this thing, what's that called? Yeah, we got a table, but we got my bench. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, there's, there's Sarah's oh, bench yeah. here. Oh yeah. Sarah's bench, she is actually working my on making My bench has more likes on finally. Instagram than anything else you make, so. <laughs> <laughs> So Sarah is making a Moravian bench, um, and this one will be uh, this one will be fun because we're going to be doing. It's going to be making a bench without a bench using very basic hand tools. Basically, making it as cheap as possible ish. Uh, we're upgrading from pine to poplar, um, but it's going to be a very simple bench that anyone can build. Because I'm always saying, you know, the first tool you should ever make is your bench. Um, it's you're just a great first hand tool project. And so we're doing this with Sarah and she'll be kicking off her woodworking career here. <laughs> and uh, so um, stay tuned for that. I'm not sure when the first video will come out on that, but we're actually gonna be going through the whole thing of, she's building it all by herself. Um, you know, I'm, I'm instructing and teaching, but I'm not actually doing the work. So it'll be kind of fun to see uh, from a very beginner standpoint, how does it all come together? So um, if you're interested in that, stay tuned. Well, you did help with the glue up because that would have been oh, yeah. the way we did it, you, you needed difficulty by myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah, and then you've got the, uh, the coffee table here. Uh, so we got the, the final build video on that. This weekend will be the, uh, the total uh, compilation video, uh, but that is now uh, for sale. We are actually auctioning it off and it is going to the, uh, the Winnebago Casa. Um, really cool organization and uh, we'll be uh, um, uh, using the, the charity for that. So um, it's currently at $200, which is a crazy steal. good steal. Um, but if you wanna see that, there's a link to that auction down below as well. So lots of links tonight. Um, what else am I forgetting before we jump into this? There's probably something else. But, uh, it's just remember. so sad that we can't travel anyway. Yeah, yeah, we don't have anything we're going to. I, uh, there was a, uh, there, there's one, there was an MT, MTCA meet coming up on the eighth, but they just canceled that one. So yeah, they're canceling all of them. We will have a Wood by Wright family party when this is all done. <laughs> yes, <laughs> no, I've got, uh, I, I'll have a whole pile of uh, save the scrap from James's burn pile, and uh, you can all come over and picture that. Well, and we fun. can have fun. So have stay tuned. Out, Sometime something. next year, we'll have a good time. <gasps> we should do a Renaissance Fair thing with our, all the Knights of the White. Oh, that would be so fun. <laughs> yeah, okay, we were talking, sorry. Who's the, uh, who's the first knight? And uh, <laughs> is Alan got the, the first shirt from the, uh, the, the white, the Knights today. So. 
<laughs> so let's get into the topic for today. We're going to be dimensioning this scrap piece. Um, and the reason I'm doing a piece this size is I want to make sure I can talk through and describe the whole thing rather than doing a full piece. But whatever I do on a piece this size is exactly the same whether it be 30 foot long or one foot. Um, even if it's a smaller board, uh, it's 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 relatively simple process. You just do the same things on whatever board. It's got six sides. You do six sides to it. Um, also, on that note, um, I do have videos going through this where I take all this information and crunch it down in time. I have one where I talk about how to do it in small boards, and one that I talk about doing regular boards. Um, and a, a few things have changed over the years as I've done things a little bit differently. It's kind of one of those fun things about woodworking is. There is no right way to do it. Um, and even though my name is right, the right way changes. <laughs> so as you learn and you try new things, you find new, item, new ways that uh, work well for you. So today we're gonna be looking at how I do it now. Um, so let's actually look at this board. Uh, this board is a piece of, um, um, oh, what's the word? Ashleaf maple, um, box elder, there it is, can, can um, also known as ashleaf maple. When you lay it flat, it's like really blind. Yeah, yeah, it's a very light wood, so it's like blindingly white, that's why I lift it up. Um, it's a relatively soft maple, uh, it's very easy to work and uh, a good board for this. It's, uh, this one actually came from Matt Cremona. Uh, it's about five quarters thick, but it's got a decent cup to it, so it's probably about a little more than a sixteenth, a little less than an eighth uh, from side to side in there. So the, one of the first questions people ask is, do you mill the bulge first or do you mill the cup first? And it really depends on the board. Um, some people will say you always mill the cup first and some say you mill the, bo the bulge first. But what I do is I lay it down flat on the bench and with the cup down, I see if the thing rocks. And if it doesn't rock, if it's solid like this, then I'm gonna mill the bulge first because it's easier to, have, to lock it down to a bench where it's not going to be moving around on you. But in this case, this one is not solid. It rocks from side to side. And so in this case, I'm actually going to flip it over and I'm going to do the, the cup first. Uh, just one of the ways that I kind of preference it. Is that a super chat? It is. Tom mm. says, Knights of the White Oak unite to help our friends who are affected by the storm. Yes. And then they like the Knights Run Fest. <laughs> we even have it named already. All right, you ready? Yes, I'm ready. What's the mom joke? Do you know why leather armor is the best for sneaking? Why? It's literally made of hide. <laughs> I like that one. I like that one. That's good. For those of you who don't know, I used to make leather armor. so. I know. Do you still have it? No, I didn't. I, I, most of what I, what I got was uh, ruined in one of our floods. Your armor got ruined in the flood? Yeah. And then Aww. some of it I accidentally left at our last house in Pennsylvania and it wasn't worth shipping it back out. So it got donated to a church that used it for um, um, Christmas events. So um, let's look at this board. Uh, it was really cool armor, I have to say. I'm just focusing before I do this anymore, there we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on here and I'm going to stop it from rocking by putting in a few shims. And then I like to lock it between dogs. Um, so I've got you know dog here and my end vise and then here, and that just makes everything much more simple. It goes on there. I don't have to worry about things moving around. Um, I like working in dogs. If you don't want dogs, you can always use a planing stop and plane into a stop in one way or the other. Um, dogs just make things a little bit simpler most of the time, and so that's why I do most in there. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a scrub plane. Um, now this is a plane with a heavy camber. This is an actual scrub plane. This is the, uh, the Stanley 41. 41, right? 41? 40, Stanley 40, not 41. Never get the numbers right. And it has a very, very big um, iron. You can see how far that sticks out. It's a very, very healthy cut. Um, and, and this will take almost an eighth inch off at the bottom of the camber. Now I have another scrub plane that I've used quite a bit. This is a Stanley number five. This is one that I modified to it and I have a whole video on that, opening up the mouth and cambering there. And I see all this white stuff on here that's from the uh, um, the epoxy that I was doing with the table, it uh, scuffs up the bottom, but it just wipes off the next time you use it. Um, so if you don't have an actual scrub plane, which these are relatively expensive, um, you don't really need that. I usually like using this one a little bit more, but because this board is a little smaller, I'm going to opt for the slightly smaller plane. Um, but for most lumber, I'm using the bigger one just because I'm doing bigger boards. 
Now the next thing I needed to do is I need to actually look at this board and learn about it. So I'm going to be using some winding sticks on here. And these are flat, so I'm going to get down here and I'm going to look and I'm going to see, yeah, I've got a little bit more of a sixteenth of an inch cup all the way along. So that means I need to take off material on this edge here and this edge here. I'm not going to take off any material here in the middle. Now the next thing I want to do is see if this has any twist in it. So I'm going to put one on here, put one on here, and I'm going to get down and eyeball these. And I can see that this one is higher here and higher here. So that means I need to take off my, most of my material here and here, and then less material here and here, and nothing at all in the middle. Now some people are going to say you should tra traverse the, the board by going across like this. And I'm trying to do a light pass with this because it's set really heavy. The problem with that is you can see here I'm actually cutting across to the middle and I don't want to do that. So I'm actually going to go with it from end to end. Ooh, I'm going to be flipping around because I'm going into the grain. Another thing to learn. Go with the grain, not against it. It's getting a good bit of extra tear out here. Actually, this is cutting a bit too heavy for me today, so I'm actually going to back it up. So I don't actually need to take off that much right now. So I'm going to back up my iron. go. And then a little more here. And I've got this really, really massively badly guard up. Let me zoom in a little bit and see, show you how this looks. Uh, it just it looks horrible. Um, and that's what scrub planes do is they, they just, they rip up the wood, but they take a lot of material off very quickly. And so just with that little bit, I'm going to put this on here and see how much closer does that get me. Man, that is actually just about dead flat. Okay, good. So, with that little bit there, we got this top, we got the twist out of it. So before, uh, before this side was up this way and this side was up this way. So we took off extra material here and extra material here and that brought these down to coplanar. But the problem is this is all really rough and, and tumbly on here. Um, so actually I'm going to bring this one over because it is a little bit lighter cut. And now I'm going to actually traverse it because now you take a little bit more than that. My word. Never mind. That one's duller than dull. There so I'm going to take, take this off. I pull the screw out and it pulls this back. So what I want to do is go across the board, and now that I have this flat from point to point, if I take a shaving from one side to the other, it's going to take off the same amount all the way across. I'm trying to get rid of this rough mark with the scrub plane. But I need a little bit more than that. And with the scrub plane, you actually adjust it in with the hammer. Out. Without it. And I'm going to turn 45 degrees. And we can kind of get an idea on this. You can see, zoom in a little bit more so you can actually see this. I'm getting good cross hatching through here, but here's a bit of a low spot. If I bring in my uh, winding sticks, I'm touching most of the bumps all the way across that way. And I'm touching most all the bumps all the way across that way. I'm going to put them this way. That's really close. And so I'm using this as a straight edge to run across. Okay, if anything, I have a little bit of a low spot here, not too much. So I'm going to look on the next bass. I'm going to skip this area and just take off a little bit everywhere else. And so we're just looking at this and we're trying to find any spot that's high. We hit the spots that are high and leave the spots that are low. Let's 
see what that gave me. Yeah, see, that's exactly where I want to be. So now, it's all wavy and wobbly, but that's okay. The average of this whole thing is flat now. So with that, I can then bring in a regular plane. And this will then just hit all of those high spots I created and smooth the whole thing out. Now, I've gotten it down pretty close. There's still a few scuff marks from the scrub plane here. One big one here I gotta get rid of. One big one, one big one. But I wanna put these on and now that it's, it's relatively smooth, I actually wanna check it over and make sure there's no twist. We're pretty good and flat. And I'm just going to check it in every direction and make sure that we're still where we want to be. Now I'm using this with a fairly heavy cut. A lot of times I'd be coming through here with a 5 or a 6 or some bigger plane. But this 4.5 really works well. I'm getting a little bit of tear out around this knot. But that's okay, I'm just taking a really heavy cut right now. I love that sound. There, we've gotten that pretty smooth. You can tell these are very, very heavy shavings. So what we're trying to do is get one edge that's perfect. One edge that we can reference everything else off of. And after doing a few passes each way, we just come back over it and check all the edges. Some people will use the sides of the plane. Oh, they're saying wrong camera. What's that? They're saying wrong camera. Oh, sorry. I'm just checking this over. And if you see some light coming through, that's okay. We're just using a big, heavy plane right now. So a little bit of light's okay. Nice. Nice. Okay. So we've got a flat surface here. Now the question is, on this one I've, I'm going to keep the live edge on this side, but on this side I have a little bit of live edge here. So I have a couple options. Number one, I could come over here with a straight edge and cut that off. Or number two, I could plane this all the way down. Or number three, I could leave the live edge if it's something specific. So to plane it down this way would take a lot of work. Um, the easiest thing is to cut it off, but it all depends on the size of board I want. Um, so that's kind of one of those things you've got to play with. Normally, what I would do is I'd flatten this side because this side doesn't have any live edge on here. And then I would dimension the board down and take the vast majority of my meat off of this side. But for demonstration size purpose tonight, um, it's not, I'm not going to actually bring this to any particular dimension unless I need to. So now the nice thing is, unless I have some junk on my bench, this should sit flat. Hey, look at that. I got a little bit of wobble there. Is that something I'm on? Oh, I'm on that. That's why. There. there we go. That's what I'm looking for. Nice and flat. Now we have one side ref one side done, we can use that to reference off the other sides. One, you can't do anything until you get one side perfectly true, and then you can use that to make all the other sides perfectly true. Um, some people like to actually start with an edge and then come off the face. I generally think that's a little bit more work because it's harder to reference a big face off of a small face. It's much, much easier to reference a uh, reference a small face off of a big face. Um, so that's why I like to do a, a face first. 
Um, on this corner here, I'm not going to worry about that today because it's video. Um, I'm not intending to use this for anything, so we're not going to spend the time to actually th thickness this all down. If I want to actually take this material off and get rid of that edge, I just use the scrub plane and keep going. I go 45 degrees one way, and then 45 degrees another way, and then 45 degrees the other way, and then occasionally checking to make sure I'm still flat and true until I got it down to the thickness I want. Um, usually I do that on the second side, um, and I'll be talking about that a little bit later. So the next thing we need to do is the edge. How do we reference that edge off of this side? So any questions while I'm setting that up? Yes, Tom West had a question. Let's see. He asked, is there an advantage to the slight skew of the plane you are using while pushing it forward? Um, oh, that's actually a really good question. So if I'm pushing, let me move this over and show you a little bit better. Do, 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 do. This way. So if I need to plane a board straight across the bench, if I push the plane perfectly straight, I'm using the full length of the plane to reference. Whereas if I turn the plane a little bit at a 45 degree angle and then I push it that way at a 45 degree angle, then I'm only using that much, I'm only using like from here to here of the plane to reference. And the nice thing about that is it allows me to focus on a small area. So if I'm just trying to get this area down, I can skew it a little bit and focus on that area. Whereas if I go full lengthwise, I'm going to be referencing a lot more of the board. So this allows me to detail or spot work on one area if you go at a skewed angle. Also, when you skew the blade, you're, a, you're actually lowering the angle of attack. So the blade is cutting at a lower angle. So it's easier to push on a skewed angle. Um, however, if you're dealing with tear out, it's far better to go straight on so that you're getting that higher angle. Higher angle is far better for tear out. So I'm going to grab a square, come over here to the board, and I'm going to reference off of this side and find out Can you? Okay. where I'm at. Am I out of focus? No, it's just Down. It up. Just there, there you go. There you go, sorry. So I'm going to put this on here, and I'm going to see where am I at. And I'm high on this edge pretty much all the way down. This edge, it's not even touching. I'm off by about a sixteenth of an inch here. So I'm going to grab my same plane here. And some people will turn the lateral adjuster over to try and take more material off of one side or the other. So if I push the lateral adjuster that way, it's going to take more material off of this side. If I push the lateral adjuster that way, it's going to take more material off of this side. And I want to take more material off of this side, so I could push the lateral adjuster that way, but that's kind of an inaccurate way of doing it. What I prefer to do is put my fingers underneath the blade, underneath the, uh, the iron, just in front of the blade, or sometimes I'll straddle it like that, but most of the time I just keep it right in front of the blade, kind of pinch the front like that. And I'm going to move the plane over so that the vast majority of the weight is hanging off of this side. And then I'm also going to think about putting more pressure on this side of the board than on this side of the board. And with that little bit in there, I often find that's all that's needed to bring this into true. Now, one of the things we'll see here, let me see if I can get a closer shot and show you this, is focus on my hand. There we go. You'll see here, I'm not hitting anything here. I'm hitting here pretty good, and I'm hitting up here pretty good, but I'm not getting anything right along this edge. So that's right about what I want. I can bring a straight edge over on here and get down here and make sure that I'm straight this way. But because my plane is almost the same length as the board, the plane will tell me if I'm straight. So I've got a nice flat edge on here. Let's check it. And that is really close, actually. It's normally not quite that close. So the, the places where the plane has taken off material, I'm checking those spots. And those are 90 degrees to this side we did before. So now that I have the majority of this at 90 degrees, I'm going to move the plane over to the middle, and I'm going to put a little bit more down pressure on it so that it's more referencing off of those areas that are surfaced. I'm going to just do a couple more passes until we get rid of the majority of that workout. There, I've got a nice clean surface all the way across there. Now we can bring this in, and we can check it. And this is one of those skills 
that over time, your hand will learn which way to go. And it's one of those things you just, you just know, I, unless I need this to be dead on absolutely perfect, I normally don't even check it with the square anymore once I get close because it's just something I feel. Um, and most of the time it's not necessary that this be dead on accurate to this edge. Um, unless there's some particular joinery that these have to be, it, there's, there's nothing that makes this edge have to be exactly perfect to this edge. Um, and so eyeballing it most of the time is pretty good. So now we have this edge and this edge. We have, let me grab this. We have our reference face and our reference edge. So I'm going to come in here. Actually, let me show you what that looks like. So I'm going to put a little arrow up here Funny. that points at that corner. Oh. Okay. What's that? It's kind of hard to see. That's better. There you go. And then on this edge, we're going to make a little curly cue. And that is a very, very old pattern that says, this is my reference face, and this is my reference edge. So that whatever I'm doing, I'm always referencing off of these two edges to make sure I get um, a good, clean surface. Now, some people at this point will do the end grain. I like to leave the end grain to the last, and I like to go then go on to the next face. And for the face, we then need to know what is the thickness that we want this to be. And so in this case, I'm going to take this down to the minimum thickness. Any questions while I get into that? Um, 26 would be good. I'm trying to stick with topic questions before jumping into other questions. Did you? I thought Did you I? just talked about skewing. Do you try to skew the blade to accomplish the same thing? Yeah, I just talked about That's screen. what I thought. CJ, go back a few minutes. And we, I think we just answered that question. I have an unrelated question. Okay. Brian Fulmer wants to know, any thoughts on pulling a western plane versus pushing? I find it easier to do to some, due to some issues on my end, but curious if James has done it much. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's lots of times where, pu where pulling the plane is far better than pushing it. Um, it depends on the bench setup and the way things are going and your particular muscular um, condition. There's, there's lots of reasons that it's... There, there's nothing that says you have to push the plane. Whatever's comfortable and, and actually does the work, great, go for it. Um, so normally at this point we say that we want a three-quarter inch thick board and that way we set our marking gauge up to three-quarter inch and we make our mark all the way around. But a lot of times I actually don't want to take the board down to a specific thickness because the specific thickness doesn't really matter. I want to make the board as big as I can get. I want as much material out of this as I can. Um, or if I'm going to be resawing, then I will lay out my resaw marks from this now dimensioned face over here. But in this case, I want to make this board as big as possible. So I'm going to go around this and I'm going to set up my marking gauge and I'm going to find the point at which the marking gauge is as close to the corner as it can get so that I can put this on here. And in this one, I'm just close to the edge. Here in the middle, I've got ooh, a good bit over an eighth to take away. And then back out here, it's getting close again. On this corner, it's pretty close. So right now, the thinnest point on this board is this corner. So I'm setting the marking gauge up to that thickness. And then we're gonna come through here. We'll lock it down a little better. And we're going to mark this board all the way around at that line, making sure we do it on all four sides. And this thing gives us something to pay attention to. Gotta be careful of this live edge over here. And this is what we're shooting for. Rather than on the first side, we were just shooting for flat. On this side, we don't really want to make this side flat. We want to make this side parallel to this side. Because we know this side is flat, that means that if we make this side parallel to this side, it's going to be flat and true. Now, the problem with this is on this edge here, I can't mark in where that line would be. Now, I could um, put in a, uh, a straight edge from point to point and mark that out. But in this case, I know that I'm just a little ways away from here. So I'm just going to save this for the very last and get it close. Now that we have this plane, we can put it in here. I don't need any shims because it's the way it needs to be. 
I'm going to make sure that my dogs are pushed down below that line I drew. And we're going to put it in here. Now, I'm going to go back to the scrub plane because we need to take off a lot of material. Right across the middle here, I've got to take over an eighth off of it. Um, actually, I need to turn this around because it looks like the grain is going the other direction. Of course, because I'm turning it around means that the grain is not going the other direction. And a lot of people will tell you to traverse and just hit that top section. So I'm just hitting that there, which works pretty well. But I actually find it a lot easier. I'm going to take off a little more material. Take it pretty heavy. I find it easier to go with the grain and just go from end to end. And here I'm taking off a lot. And I'm going to check where I'm at. Still a little ways off the line. So I'm going to back it up a little bit. And I'm going to try and run right over the, the, the hill that I created, because we're creating a valley and a hill and a valley and a hill. I want each run to then be on top of the hill. And I'm skewing the plane just a little bit so that I'm referencing more material around. Okay, I'm about halfway down here in the middle. And I want to be careful. I'm close to the line right here, but on either side of it, I'm a good ways away. So. Yep, just me. Okay. What's that? Here, let me see if I can pull those in a little closer. It's hard to see with this box elder. But here's the reference face. It's just an arrow pointing at the reference corner. And then off of that corner, you make a little curly cue. There's nothing really special about this mark other than it's old and traditional. It's been done for hundreds of years. Um, here, let me see if I can show you this. I don't know if I'm able to get close to it. I hope you can see that line right there. You can see I'm pretty close to it all the way across here. And if I take another full depth cut, I'm probably going to be hitting that line. What we want to do is we want to stay away from that line as long as possible. So we're not actually hitting that line until we get in there with the smoothing plane. And then on the other side, you can see it's pretty similar. A little bit heavier here and here, but we'll take care of those in a little bit. What other questions we got? Um, there was just a question. Let's see. Greg Chang wants to know, would it matter what kind of marking gauge you use? The nope. one you've used versus the circular one. I like using pins when going with the grain. I find them just to give me a little bit better guidance. Um, I, wheels tend to ride with the grain and go off one way or the other. Um, so I don't like them quite as much as I do a pin. Uh, a lot of people like the, the wheel or the knife. Um, but for me, pins are really, really good, except for going across the grain. So I backed the iron off on this, so I'm taking a lighter cut. And now I'm going to do the same thing again. You hear how it's not, even, not quite even hitting in many places. I'm just hitting the high spots. OK, now I've gotten this. Really, really, really close. Um, it's still not quite close enough to bring in my regular plane. And so here's where I'm going to start tra traversing it. We need to be very, very careful here because what happens is if I plane off the edge here, I'm going to be ripping up this corner. And this corner is actually really close to where I want to be. So before doing that, I'm going to grab the plane, you grab this plane, and I'm going to chamfer it down to that line with the marking gauge. And what that will do is it will stop that edge from breaking off. Just like that. So now I have this chamfer on the edge, so when I go past, I'm not going to be ripping that out. Hopefully. And 
one of the reasons that we go at different angles and we traverse the board and we go with the board and then we'll traverse in the opposite direction is that this makes up for any problems with any one direction. So if I'm out of square in one direction, then I will actually need to go this way so I'm not going with the, against the grain. I'm going to chip in there. Because if I happen to be out of square this way, and I have a bowl going from corner to corner, just going this way means I'm going to make that bowl deeper and deeper. But if I have that bowl this way, and then I come across and I go this way, now I'm going to be going from high spot to high spot, and I'll only be hitting those high spots. And so it's a way to guarantee your accuracy on it. Now we're going to check our corner. A little bit high here still. A little bit high right here, not by much. A little bit high, a little bit high. Okay, we're doing pretty good here. So it's all pretty close to where I want it to be. I'm going to take one more layer off with this. <laughs> I love this texture. Let me zoom in and see if you can see this. Come on, focus. This texture is just one of the things that I love about a scrub plant. And I know a lot of um, drawer bottoms and things were left like that. It just looks good. So we are really close to our line all the way around. We're eh, between a 16th and a 32nd most places on here. So now I'm going to leave my scrub plane behind because at this point, my scrub plane is taking off about a 16th of an inch. And so if I hit one of those low spots where I'm only a 32nd away, I'm going to go down past my line. So we're staying away from the line as we can. I'm going to bring in my heavy set four and a half. getting down flat. Got just a hair here. I'm always going to come back and check this line. I want to make sure I'm staying the same amount away from the line all the way around. If anything, I'm low a little bit here, but not too much. So I don't want to hit this corner, but I want to hit everything else equally. So we're going to do another couple passes. And I'm just taking one stroke widthwise across the board from one end to the other. I'm ready to do that. And I didn't want to hit this corner, so right at the end, I'm just lifting up right about here. It's just a natural thing to pull out so that I'm not running off the end. I'm just feathering out at that point. And I think two or three more passes. Actually, I'm right about at my line right here. I'm still high here and still high here. I'm going to look back around really close to my line here. A little high here, a little high here. So that means I've got a strip down here in the middle where I'm really close to my space. But I need to take off more here and more here. So I'm going to do one, two, skip a couple, and then one, two. Buckle my shoe. All right, time out. What's that? Brian Fulmer wants to know, can you show the line before you get to it? Yeah. Um, if the video will pick up the line. I actually want to see. Okay, here it is a good spot. So, let's see if I can focus on this. 
Don't know if I'll be able to catch this or not. So right here, I am right on my line here. And you can just see this little wisp of a line here. So from this point to this point, I don't want to take off anything more all day long here. And then on this end, you can still see the line right here. I just need like one more shaving from here to here. Can you mark it with the pencil or not? Let me see. I don't know if there's enough on there to actually mark. Oh. Just a tiny, tiny bit right there. I don't know if you can see that or not. But I need to take off from there to there, where I still have some line. And then from here back over, I'm right at my line. But then on this edge, I'm right at the line all the way along here until I get here. And I still got a good bit more material to take off on this corner here. So I need to focus on this corner and just a couple, like one more shaving on this corner here. And you can notice at this point, I have not brought my winding sticks over or my flat edges. Normally I would be coming in here with my plane and I'd be checking it and making sure it's flat and true. But one of the things I want to show is that you don't have to do that as long as you stay away from your line as long as possible and then only hit the areas where you need to hit it, not the areas where you don't need to hit it. You'll know that that line is parallel to this side and if this side is true, then any line parallel to that is also true. So, let's do Mar the one. Marshall Merle wants to know, can you feel a little feather on the line? Um, it's more see than feel. Yeah, right there. That one shaving was enough to take that off. And we're on our line all the way across this side. So we're on the line here, 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 all but this little area right here. So, let's see where that gets us. Just a little more. And you can see what I'm actually doing is I'm going at off the angle a little ways because I don't want to hit this corner. I'm at where I need to be here. I just want to do this triangle here. So I'm only hitting that triangle there. Just one more right here. There we go. Nice and true. Now, let's actually check it and make sure we're good on the line. That makes me happy. Still just a sliver high here, but not bad. And that's good. Let me actually show you what that looks like. Let me see if I can show you what that looks like. Um, so it's going to take me a moment to set up. See if I can get the light coming through there. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that way. Let's try this way. Focus on that. Okay. So I don't know if you guys can see. There's a little bit of light right there in the middle of the screen. And that's because I'm high at this point right here. And it's just a little bit, not much. And usually at this point, that is within tolerances. Um, because at this point, we're just using a really heavy set plane. So normally at this point, I'm going to back this up so that I'm taking a thinner cut. Something around three or four thousandths ish. And now, a little bit more than that. I'm just shaving this off, much, much thinner shaving. That's going to get things a lot smoother. Not quite down to smoothing yet, but we're taking much, much thinner shavings than we were earlier. These are like crispy, and these are a little bit more fluffy. And then, it's so fluffy. once I get that true, I know this is where I want to be. I'm going to bring in my smoothing plane, and I'm going to set this up 
fairly nice and fine. This isn't going to take much on the first two passes. Just need to go just a little bit deeper than that. I'm just working from one side to the other. Just a little bit more. And this will get me the buttercream that I'm looking for. A little bit deep on that side. There we go. And there, we got a nice smooth board. And let's just see how accurate we are on this. So theoretically, this should be the exact same thickness all the way around. So I've got 993, one even, 995, Oop, come on. 993. 999. So there you go. That's pretty close to parallel. So we've got our reference face, our reference edge, our other face. This is not a reference face, it's the other face. Now we can move on to doing the ends. So any questions? Um. Yeah, let's see. I'm trying to do the ones that are. Sorry, I got distracted. No, you're by fine. Do that while I'm setting this up. So, I'm not sure how you're supposed to pronounce this. We're going to go with Zoot, the short version. Any tips for flattening an end grain slab? I would have tried a low angle jack plane, but I don't have one. I gave up and built a router sled. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, you're, you're talking about a cookie. Uh, cookie is when you take the log and you cut it this way. So you take a slab out of the log um, horizontally. Um, yeah, uh, really, it's it's a low angle plane or a really, 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 really well set up bench plane. Um, and even then, you're going to be constantly resharpening that to do it well. Um, so yeah, it's uh, router sled is the way to go. <laughs> So, um, hey, we have a super chat. Oh, we do? Yes. Cool. What we got? You ready? Try to show this. Yep. I don't, I don't think I've asked this one. What did Santa say to Mrs. Claus when he saw a thunderstorm? What? Looks like reindeer. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> to keep reminding myself of that, but I love you. Oh, you hush them. <laughs> so with the, um, the ends of the board, if you have a shooting board, this is the great time because you have a reference edge and you have a reference face, so you can set it on there and you can shoot the end of it and bring it up into true because your fence is against your reference edge. Now your end is going to be square to that. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do it without a shooting board because generally I prefer to do it without a shooting board. I find it to be a little more fun. So I'm actually going to stand it up in my vise. Move the camera over here. And we're going to look at it this way. So I'm going to put my square in here. Actually, let me show you what it looks like. So here, I'm going to focus on here. Let me see if you can see this uh, this way. So you can see there's a good bit of a gap here. At least I hope you can see a good bit of a gap here. And it goes down and it touches here. So that means I need to take more material off of this side. The other thing I need to check is this way. And I'm going to make sure my square is not on this side because this is not my reference face. This is my reference face. So I'm going to make sure my square is on this face. And I'm going to go down here. And on this way, I need to take more material off of this edge. So let's put it in the vise. And I need to take the most material off of this edge over here and then off of this end here. So I'm going to grab my low angle jack. 
And I'm going to make it cut a little bit deeper. So the first cut's the deepest. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. You're just now using that? Now, I've gotten this area here planed. Let's put this on and check it. And really close to flat. Not quite. I need to go a little bit deeper here. And then let's check this. Oh, cool. We're actually, I took off a bit too much here, but it's not a problem because I still need to take off more on this side. So now I can turn this around because I don't want to plane off the end of the board. I need to take off a little bit of material here. And I'll notice that if I hit here, I'm going to hit here and I'm going to hit here, but I'm not hitting anything in the middle. That's because there's a low spot. That's fine. So I'm going to plane from here to somewhere around here. I'm not going to go off the end. And I'm just going to keep going until I'm down through all the junk. And stopping here means I'm not taking any more material off of there. So the plane is always referencing on there. So I'm just cutting lower and lower and lower back here. I'm taking more material off of this side. And that's fine because that means I'm taking a perfectly straight edge from here to here. Before we go on, let's check it this way. Dead on flat that way. And I know I'm going to be low here because I've been taking off more Whoa, material. Um, okay, time out. What's that? It's really blurry. Is it? Yes. Oh, sorry. Is that better? A little bit, yes. So, wow, I thought I was going to be low there. But I'm like, smack on. Let me grab my longer square. Every now and then you get lucky. And that's how I married her. <laughs> okay, yep. Got to take off just a hair more here. Just like one or two more passes. So I'm going to turn it around. And I'm going to take a shaving from this corner in, and I'm going to stop right about here. One, two. Now let's check it. One more shaving. Just because I want to be perfect. Perfect. All the way along there. So now we made sure we referenced off our reference edge across this. So that's, we know this is square to this. We referenced off of our reference face over here. And so we know that this is square to this. And so if it's square to this edge and square to this face, this is perfectly true. And then we can repeat the process for this end and do the same thing over here. And so that's how if you know that you reference one face, you get one edge true, you can do everything off of those two edges and you get nice clean surfaces all the way around the board. Uh, so that's the way you just keep on going on all six sides. It's a little bit more difficult if you have a live edge here to work off of because you can't reference off of that. Um, but without the live edge, it becomes really true and easy. So if I want to cut this board to width, which is usually what we're going to be doing here, because normally I wouldn't want that live edge. I would then come in with my panel gauge. Back that up just a little bit. And I would set my panel gauge to the width of the board I want. And just like I marked the thickness of the board, now I'm going to measure the width of the board off of this edge that we originally trued up. And so I'd make that mark all the way around the board. I can take it over and cut it off and then plane that edge true. And I would plane that edge true to my reference face, not the other face. Because if there's any slight deviation between those two, I know that my reference is the one I want to actually follow. So just like that, you can go all the way around the board. And as long as you keep that in mind, that you make one face perfectly flat, and then you start working your way around it. You make one edge 90 degrees to that face. And then you can make your other side parallel to that face. 
and then your ends are 90 degrees to that face and 90 degrees to that one edge. And the whole board then becomes square because you are just referencing off of that original face and that original edge. Everything else comes into, into focus. So what questions do we have? Uh, let's see. Kenny and Janet Horn asked, what is the difference in a four plane and a scrub plane other than <laughs> size? Um, a four plane is known as a four plane because it comes before the other planes. Um, and so most people would call this a four plane. Um, historically, a four plane comes from the English tradition um, and English um, people like their scrub plane or their four plane to be a bit bigger. Um, most Europeans um, had the scrub plane um, and they liked it to be a little bit smaller. And so the Stanley uh, really took off with making this size very popular. Um, and so Stanley scrub planes and every scrub plane since has been based off of the Stanley style being much smaller. And that's why a lot of people like to make a scrub plane out of a cheap number four. Um, I like to make it out of a number five because if I'm going to get a scrub plane, there's already a scrub plane that's that size. Um, plus, I like the weight of the number five. If I'm doing any board that's like 24 inches or longer, I want a bigger scrub plane. And so that's why I'm going to be using this. And, and normally, m people are going to refer to this as a four plane and this is a scrub plane, but they both do the exact same thing. They both get used at the same time. They're the first plane to touch the wood. And then you go on from there. So just to keep that in mind, you, you start with your scrub plane. You start with your four plane. This takes off a lot of material. It does a horrible job. It makes the surface look bad, but this makes the surface flat. It doesn't, it doesn't make it smooth, but it makes it flat. It gets rid of the twist. It gets rid of any cup, and it makes all the surface relatively flat. Then you come in with a heavy set plane that will take off a lot of material and this will get rid of all the waviness from the scrub plane and it will make it relatively smooth. And then you come in with a longer plane, usually if you're working on a bigger board where you bring in your six or seven, and then you actually use that to reference the whole surface and take a smooth shaving from one side to the other. That gets it nice and flat and true and everything on there. The one thing it doesn't do is it doesn't get it ready for finish. It doesn't actually perfectly smooth out the surface. That's where you then bring in your smoothing plane and you smooth the surface. And so you're not working from smallest plane to biggest plane. You're not working from biggest plane to smallest plane. You're using the plane where it's intended to be using. The scrub plane and the four plane take off a lot of material, but they leave it rough. And then you're going to take off the plane that still takes off a decent amount of material, but it has a flat iron. So it's going to get rid of all of the cambered cuts from the scrub plane. And then you might have some irregularities um, over the whole board. And so you use a longer plane that can reference a larger surface. And then once everything is true and clean, you really want to butter it up and make the surface nice and shiny. You bring in your detailed smoothing plane that gets rid of any of the tear out that might have been caused from earlier planes and details the surface down to exactly what you want. So that's the progression through the planes and, and uh, treating the board. What's next? So Greg Chang wants to know, do you ever have to worry about the panel gauge warping and going out of square? No. Um, like it, it, I'm assuming you're talking about the fence um, not being square to it this way. And as you can see here, um, mine has a good bit of wobble on it. And that really doesn't matter at all because it's not about this pin being square to this edge because it's a point. You can't make a point square to a face. It's about this point being exactly the same distance away from this point here. Um, this fence just stops this whole thing from rotating on the board. If I just had one point here, then this could swing on the edge, devi deviating how far in this actually makes the point. Um, so this does not have to be square. It just has to be locked at a point. Um, so yeah, don't worry about that. It's a point, a distance away from a point, and some, um, um, some panel gauges actually don't have a full fence. They just have another bar out here and another bar out here that it rests on because it makes it a little bit easier than making it a flat, smooth surface. So Marshall wants to know if you had to pick between a Dunlap number three 
and a Stanley Handyman number five. Which would you convert to a scrub plane? Um, the number five, number five. It's it's a better shape and size for it. As to functionality and collectability between the two, they're pretty equal. Um, but the number five, that that size is is most commonly better for um, scrub plane, four plane work because it's bigger, so you can use it to reference more surface area, and it, it does a better job of actually flattening the surface. Usually, the larger the plane is, the more of the board it's referencing. Therefore, it can make it flat. It will it will only hit the high spots. It won't dip down into the low spots because a big plane can't fit into low spots. What's next? I think we're done, and it's 9 o'clock. Oh, is it 9 already? It's 9. Oh, wow. Well, thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, and uh, please uh, support Matthew. There's a link to it down below. <coughs> He's uh -oh. been through two hurricanes in the last three years, and uh, so we're doing a GoFundMe to, uh, to support him and help him dig out. Uh, he's lost everything twice. Um, not a great situation, but he is a, a great member of the community and uh, want to help him out if possible. Um, also, if you want to bid on the, um, the coffee table, that is still up. It's currently at $200, or it was at the beginning of this. Um, so uh, con uh, congratulations to whoever is going to win that. It looks like someone's going to be getting a steal of a deal. Um, yeah, that's about it. I don't know. Maybe we just got a road trip. Yeah. Pay for the gas and we'll come out. <laughs> Sounds like fun. We can mask. We can social distance and drop off the tape. Plane, table, plane. What's the name? <laughs> yeah, and stay tuned for uh, Sarah's build. Um, for those of you who don't know, we're actually, Sarah is building her no bench. Wheat. There is no wheat, no Kimosabi. She is building it all by herself. <laughs> and so this will be a project we're going to um, actually um, do the whole video project from a beginner's First project. This is the first thing that she has made with hand tools. Um, the only first woodworking project you've done. Um, and so it'll be a very simple bench done as efficiently and as cost effectively as possible. Um, so it'll be a very fun, fun build. But it's all in glue up right now. So hopefully this weekend um, we'll have the legs in glue up and we'll be uh, getting a bench here very soon. And it'll actually be Sarah size. Yes, it'll be down at 31 inches. Or if not, on shorter. the floor. <laughs> you said Macaronis is 32. Yeah. He also likes his bench on the low side, and he's short to begin with. So. Hello, can you go? I love it. Yeah, it'll actually be on the high side of the bench for your size. But that's I know. I like it. Well, no, it's not what you like. It's what well, I no, like. The thing is, you, you always build the bench higher than you expect to because you can always cut the legs off. You can't add more onto the legs. Says the man who's six foot one to the woman who's four foot ten. You can always cut it shorter. <laughs> so on that note, I'm going to go out to the doghouse. We'll see you all next week. <laughs> and next, life, next week's live. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. It was a kind of a fun one. And if you have any ideas for uh, the, the video next week, let me know. And uh, we'll have fun then. So until next time, Bye. have a wonderful day. Oh, hang on. i got to find the button. Here it is. I'm still waving. It's okay. <laughs> all right.